Now we are here starting a new unit that is known as uh, the excretory products and their elimination. Now if we talk of excretory product, we have certain, uh, mainly we will be dealing with liquid metabolic waste. Okay, that is filtered uh, and excreted to the kidney. But if we talk of metabolic waste, the organisms generally uh, excrete ammonia, urea, uric acid, carbon dioxide, water and you know some ions like phosphorus, like uh, sodium, potassium and chlorine. Okay, so these uh, ions need to be excreted but you know the uh, rate of excretion depends on the rate of ingestion. For example, if you drink plenty of water, obviously the quantity of urine will be more. Okay, so that is a common example and uh, here on the basis of the product excreted uh, through the kidney or uh, excretory product that is excreted through the body because every organism doesn't have a kidney. So they have been turned into three. One is ammonotelic. Now what is ammonotelic? Ammonotelic is given to name is given to those organisms that is known as ammonotelism also that means organism that excrete ammonia. So we have certain bony fishes or freshwater fishes they are ammonotelic that means they directly excrete ammonia. The next comes is ureo, ureotelic. What is ureotelic? That means these organisms excrete urea. Okay. For example, mammals, amphibians, certain marine fishes, they excrete urea. Okay. And if we talk of human, especially the human beings, you know, the urine consists of urea, uric acid and creatine. Okay. And of water of course. Then the last part is we come across the uricotelic. Now this uricotelic, especially in animals where water loss has to be minimized. Okay, especially in birds, you see birds they do not have the urinary bladder because of um, the body becomes heavy of the urinary bladder. So since they are adapted for life in the air, the body has to be light. So that is the reason the adaptive modification is the urinary bladder is completely absent in cases of birds. So they uh, excrete, you know, uric acid and nitrogenous waste in the form of paste, semi-solid, liquid or in, uh, in the form of pellets and bits. Okay. So, uh, for example, see birds, reptiles, insects, snails, these are all, uh, these come under uropotelic organisms. Okay. Now, in higher animals, for example, in case of vertebrate and of course the human beings, if we are talking of, they have got a specialized organ. Okay. That specialized organ is known as kidney. Okay. Now, the kidney, the functional unit of kidney is known as nephron. That will come into the later part of the chapter. But uh, the entire system, the excretory system, if we are talking of, they consist of a pair of kidney, pair of ureters and urinary bladder. These pair of ureters, you know, connects, it's a tubule connecting from the kidney to the urinary bladder. They, okay. These tubes. And ultimately, urethra, urethra is an external opening uh, through which the urine from the urinary bladder is excreted out. Okay. So, this I will come, uh, come to it. Once you see the diagram, you will understand it better. Now, here you see the diagram. You can see a pair of kidney. Then you have the urinary bladder. Okay. Now, if we... Uh, cut a section, transverse section, uh, sorry longitudinal section of a kidney, you see that uh, the kidney has many layers, okay, the cortex, the medulla and uh, another thing is the outside is the pelvis, renal pelvis and here cortex, medulla and pelvis, okay. Now internal you see these are funnel shaped uh, organs inside. Now you see there is one gland that is known as adrenaline gland. Then uh, for blood circulation, we have the renal artery that brings the blood rich uh, uh, in metabolic waste and all. That is renal vein brings that and renal artery here it, it is also there. 
okay so in in between the renal artery and renal vein the filtration action happens that i'll be coming to it in the later part as i told you you see in this uh, see afferent arteriole they bring the blood and from there the efferent see this is a magnified portion of a nephron and that is uh, supposed to be the functional unit of kidney okay see efferent artery takes afferent brings the blood to the kidney and it goes so see in a kidney that nephron nephron is made up of glomerulus and bowman's capsule see here if you can see the there is a glomerulus that means it is a network of fine tubules okay so since they are uh, lower in area see the tube is thin if we take a cross section the glomerulus this is thinner tube compared to afferent arteriole so obviously the excess water along with few minerals and uh, bigger molecules they simply come out of it and when it comes out you see the bowman's capsule the yellow portion now it simply sucks in the liquid extra liquid that comes out and later the blood you see again it flows here now you see uh, you can hear see here's a loop like structure that is known as henley's loop one comes down and another it goes up okay so then here is also again see the distal convoluted tubule and proximally collect uh, convoluted tubule and here is a collective duct now this duct you know actually uh, connects to the renal papilla where drop wise the urine is excreted okay here you see this okay this is a more uh, see pct what is pct it is a proximal convoluted tubule can you see here afferent arteriole that more larger uh, diagram okay here it is known as a malpighian body or renal corpuscles okay now here the kidney glomerulus filtration the bowman's capsule and this procedure is known as ultra filtration now here you see after glomerulus filtration see the proximal uh, convoluting tubule the distant convoluting tubule you see see hco3 goes out nacl goes out h2o goes out important nutrients go out potassium goes out and what comes in ammonia goes in nh2 um, um, nh3 is the ammonia then excess then descending loop you see it becomes again thinner water also excess water if it is required in the body it also goes away but from here you know urea enters sodium comes out then ultimately what goes out is like this so he, in this portion you know you have again cellular reabsorption okay cellular re now here you can see adh see adh is the anti diuretic hormone or vasopressin okay that releases the anti anti diuretic hormone and facilitates a water reabsorption for the later part of this so adh and another one is see glomerulus filtration rate see uh, uh, these two actually counterbalance see if you drink less water less quantity of urine that means graphene uh, uh, glomerulus filtration rate will reduce because the anti diuretic hormone controls the uh, thing okay and what is jga you see jga is a complex that plays a regulatory role that means glomerulus blood flows to the glomerulus blood pressure okay increases so this gfr gets activated when the pressure of the blood of the um, jga is there it increases the blood pressure okay or uh, and then gfr glomerulus filtrate rate increases but you know once it is over once it is over see anglotensin okay anglotens uh, anglo uh, see anglotensin 1 in the blood and anglotensin blood in the two these are a very powerful vasoconstrictor that increases the blood pressure because if there is no blood pressure the grf will not able to filter it then here see renin renin is also another thing renin and anti 